Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of Bash Scripting. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about the last two things that we discussed in the previous video. So, we talked about the syntax in the previous video for the operators. There are multiple operators and then we talked about decision making, which is a else statement. So, let's dive right into the video to understand them. Okay, before moving in the forward in the video, if you have not subscribed my channel and you are new over here, kindly subscribe. So, let's get started. So, the first program would be arithmetic operators. Let me put this over here. And then we are doing very basic thing over here. We have a equal to 10, b equal to 20. And we are doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and modulus. I hope you already know what, what, what we have over here. Let's run this. So first of all, we'll check where are we right now. We are in different folder. So let's dive right into the correct folder, which is 0, 3 operators. So let's do cd, 0, 3, hit tab, enter and we are over here. You can do ls over here and you can see the programs over here. So do an sh, run 0, 1, tab, hit enter and you can see the addition is 30, the subtraction is minus 10, the multiplication is 200, the division is 0 and the modulus is 10. Okay, so that's how you can understand it. You don't have to uh, like hawk through the video. What you can do is just you can just pause the video and understand it. Copy the statements and write in your own program or just write your own program or you can just clone it from the repository. This is you can see 10 unchanges changes over here which has untracked right now i'll just put it in the repository at the time of this video getting published you will already see on the repository let's move to the second one which is relational operator so in relational operator we'll talk about multiple things so let me clear this first and then run this program sh and then we'll walk through the program so what is happening over here a equal to 10 and b equal to 20 whatever we are doing over here now you can notice one peculiar thing that the bracket i'm using over here is of this type this is kind of old thing but the one we are using now are the uh, bar brackets so you can use any one of them but bar brackets are the recent ones okay so let us understand this so 10 is not equal to 20 so what it is printing a is not equal to b similarly we are checking the not condition which is getting fulfilled so it is going in then and test printing a is not equal to b here it was going in else here going it's, it's going in then because the condition has fulfilled okay fi is for like ending the program if reverse fi a is less than b yes a is less than b then over here a is less than b or equal to b yes a is less than or equal to b if i would have given the value 10 over here then it would have given the same thing and the end at the end it's saying a is greater than b no a is not greater than b 10 is not greater than 20 so it will print that okay and the last one it will print a is not greater than or equal to b so that's how we do the relational operators very basic thing guys okay let's move to the third program which is the logical sorry logical operators now in the logical operator what we'll see is let me go back a equal to true and b equal to false so in the logical operators we are doing am and over here we are doing or over here and we are doing equal to over here okay sorry the negation part not equal to so a is true b is false both the condition are fulfilled if both the conditions are fulfilled let me just clear this first and see you show you how this program runs so this is sh03 hit tab enter and you can see both the conditions are true because a equal to true and b equal to false and that's we are that's what we are doing it now you notice this brackets the bar brackets over here the previous one which we were using so you can use this because this is a better method and the latest method to do in shell scripting or your bash programming okay and this we are doing or operator so in or one condition has to be matched so one condition has to be fulfilled then it will say at least one of them is true which is this and this both the condition has to be fulfilled and in negation what it does is a equal to true okay and then negation a which is true makes it to false so fault equal to equal to true no right so it won't go in then it will go in else it will print a was initially true and that's how it works guys okay take a pause over here pause the video and understand it and then move forward let's move on to the file test we'll talk about bitwise later file test in file test what we are doing is we already have a file over here bitwise sh which is this in the same directory and then we'll try to run this let me clear this first sh 0, 5 tab enter now you can see it has it has found the file which is bitwise.sh it, it, it says yes the file exists hyphen e hyphen s 
for the file empty, hyphen R for the read access, hyphen W for the write access, hyphen X for the executable access. Okay, now it has printed file exists. Yes, because the file exists and file is not empty because we already have stuff in there, which I'll show you in, after this. And then we have file name in which we are checking read access in which we are checking write access. Yes, it has the read access and write access. And then uh, it has the execute access. No. How do I find out about these three? So what we can do, I can do ls hyphen al over here and you can see these are the files. So what we are talking about, we are talking about this file. So let me just drag it over here. We are talking about bitwise file. So does it has read access? Yes. It has write access? Yes. It has executable access x which is x symbol. No, it does not. So if I do a ch mod over here and I give triple seven and the file name, it will provide this file name, it will provide the access, but I'm not going to do it right now. You guys can do it and understand it. So that's how it works guys. Okay. Now let's dive right into the bitwise thing. Okay. Let me clear that this is very interesting and thing to understand. If I go over here, run this program, this is sh04, hit enter. And you can see, let's not talk about how 4, 7 and 3 is coming. I'm going to show you a diagram and then you'll understand it. Okay. Now here, what you can see is the complement of B. Uh, B is like bitwise complement. B and is bitwise and B or is bitwise or B or is bitwise or B complement is bitwise complement. This is left shift and right shift. Let us understand about B complement. So B complement is the formula n equal to number whatever your number you are giving and then n plus 1 and then minus after that so here it is 7 7 plus 1 is 8 minus 8 which is this and this is the bitwise complement or a not okay so this is the formula just remember that now left shift is the number of times you are shifting it i'm shifting it two times you can shift it one time this would be the result okay so just convert your number into binary okay so what would be the binary of 7 4 2 1 which is 7 we are shifting it left side now this is different number and this is different number so two times you have shifted so two times you have put 0 now if you convert this so this would be 1 this would be 2 4 8 and 16 so 16 plus 8 is 24 24 plus uh, your 24 plus 4 is 28 and that's your answer is and that's how left shift works guys the right shift is exactly the opposite. You have to shift on the right. So this was my 4 and what we are doing over here is, I guess 4 is 0 over here, right? So this is how you represent 4. This is how it's going to be and this is how it's going to be. So it has shifted it over here and then the value is 1 over here, which is this and then the answer is 1. And that's how it works, guys. Okay, this four, if you can mention zero, one, two, sorry, one, two, four. Okay, perfect. This is perfect. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, the value of bitwise and is four between seven and four. And then bitwise or is seven. And then the bitwise, sorry, bitwise or is seven, bitwise or is three. And let us understand through a diagram. So these three will be using in the bitwise. So this is bitwise and operator, bitwise or operator, bitwise or operator. So concept explanation is something like this. If A has a value of zero and B has a value of zero, then A and B, both the condition are fulfilled or not. So both the condition are not fulfilled. So it has to give zero or, or one condition has to fulfilled so no condition is getting fulfilled so zero and for zor it will give us zero itself so in and both the condition has to be fulfilled in or one condition has to be fulfilled so zero is false one is true so when we say zero here and one here in and both the condition has to be fulfilled but both are not fulfilled what i mean by fulfilled is zero is true sorry, zero is false, one is true. So true and true has to be two conditions to be fulfilled, then only it will get one over here, okay? So zero is there, one is there, one condition is false over here, 
then it should give us 0. And in OR, either condition should be fulfilled. So A is 0, but B is 1, and 1 is true. So this is fulfilled. So 1 over here. For ZOR, we have 1 over here. So in this, either A or B has to, uh, one of these values has to be 1, then it will be 1. Now, if A has 1 and B has 1, and both of, which means both of them are true, so A and B will be true because both the condition are fulfilled. Now, in A or B, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It will be 1 because e either A has to be 1 or B has to be 1. So, it will give us 1. But in case of ZOR, if both the conditions are fulfilled, it will give us 0 as it gave it in this 0 and 0. When A is 1, B is 0, A and B will give us 0. Why? Because one of these is false. As I told that 0, consider 0 as false. In A or B, it will give us 1 because one condition has to be fulfilled and one is already fulfilled. So 1 is true. Then in A, ZOR B, what it will do is, it will give us one value. So that's what I told earlier that either in ZOR, either of A or B has to be 1. So that's how we explain bitwise operator. So the first one, bitwise operator takes the last two values of first and the other one and then calculate it. So in AND, both the condition has to be fulfilled. So 1 and 0 would be 0, 1 and 0 would be 0 again, 1 and 1 would be 1, and 0 and 0 would be 0. So what is this 0, 1, 1 in front of 7? This is a binary representation. So binary representation of 7 would be 0, 1, 1, 1, and for 4, it would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And after that, this bitwise, when it talks after the last two values, it will calculate on the basis of AND. And this is the truth table of AND gate. So now 1 or 0 would be 0. So this would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And this is a binary representation of digit 4. Thus, the answer is 4. Now let's move on to our fourth one. Sorry, uh, the OR one. The truth table of OR is that both of them has to be 1. Then it will be 1. and then only it will be 0 when both of them are 0. So 1 and 0 would be 1, 1 and 0 would be 1, 1 and 1 would be 1 obviously and 0 and 0 would be 0. So this is the representation in binary for number 7 and that's why the answer is 7. Let's move on to our ZOR or XOR gate that this is the truth table. So when one of the values is 0, then the answer would be 1 like this and like this otherwise it would be 0 if both the values are same. So in order to calculate that we'll just convert this into binary 0 1 1 1 4 would be 0 1 0 0 and 3, three is the answer because 1 and 0 would be 1 which is taking uh, a reference from here 1 and 0 would be 1 again 1 and 1 would be 0 and 0 and 0 would be 0. So 0 0 1 1 is the binary representation of 3 and that's why the answer is 3. So after this diagram, after this explanation, I hope you guys have understood it that how this 4, 7 and 3 has come. So if there is an issue, feel free to comment below. Now let's dive right into the decision making part. So I'll go to the if program. I'll just go over here. I'll just close this. Let me do a CD. I'm going to another folder 0, 05. Sorry, 0, 04, I guess decision making perfect clear it and do an ls over here yes you are perfectly all right okay so we are going to run this now sh01 hit tab enter you can see a is not equal to b why because a is 20 b is 40 so it has come over here and it has compared a with b a is equal to b no right so it won't this block won't even run so this block will because does not equal to a does not equal to b and that's why it has printed a is not equal to b very simple guys let's go to if else now in terms of if else what we are doing is let's run this let me clear this and run this sh02 if else a equal to b yes a is equal to b so the syntax you can see that everything we are writing is in the 
one syntax so if if the condition is fulfilled a equal to b if not then it will direct it over here and then it will print a is not equal but 20 is equal to 20 so if i make it 40 so let me just save this run it again and you can see the answer is a is not equal to 40 and that's how it works guys let me push this back okay now this is if else ladder so if else if elif and then we have else over here very basic example i'm giving a number four over here and then we are just comparing the number with one and two but these both condition won't be fulfilled because its number is greater than right so number is not perfect so i'll just do sh over here zero three hit tab enter and you can see the value is invalid why because it is not going to fulfill over here because the number is not equal to one number is not equal to two and then it will put over in the else condition and the invalid value if i had made it over two over here control s it would have gone to the second condition so the value of number is two and that's how it works guys okay i'll just save it that way let's go to your if then l elif else so if the number is thousand it will print the first thing if the number is less than which is 999 it will print this if the number is greater than thousand it will print this let's test one condition one by one each condition one by one okay so the program number is 04 so sh04 hit tab enter and you can see the total is 1000 okay and this condition has fulfilled now if i had made it like this so this will go to greater greater than 1000 which is expected and if i made it 10 which is less than it will show me the third case total is less than 1000 so hi we have tested all of these three conditions so i hope you guys have understood it pause the video right now if you don't have not understood it write your own program and then move forward this is the very interesting case which is known as switch case last topic for today so switch case is like you have to give the condition over here you can choose it from the input as well but we have not discussed input output right now but we'll, we'll discuss later in this course so pass the variable in the string what we are doing passing it in the string so nd is this one okay so there are case one case two and case three so case is written like that and when you want to stop it you write esac like for if you use fi and for case you wrote esac okay now dogs is the variable which is coming from here it is referencing to nd value once this is fulfilled it will print this so let us run it and then you can see how it works 05 sh05 hit enter and you can see found in moderate temperatures and that's how it works guys okay make sure the syntax is like this otherwise the program won't run now if i have used over husky over here what would be the result found in very cold places and that's how it works guys so i hope you guys have understood it if you have not understood just pause the video write your own program and then you will be able to understand so if there is any issue feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next video